Hello, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mike Salmon here from Harvest Christian Fellowship. I pray everyone is having a good day. Uh, I want to speak to our uh, Harvest Christian Fellowship uh, family members, uh, uh, members, friends, acquaintances, uh, those listening. Um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, pray everything is going well. I just want to remind you guys to continue studying and learning and growing. Uh, don't forget to get your kids going through. Uh, the Bible studies, uh, remember, um, all you got to do is when you go into Facebook is open up, uh, I'm not Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, find Harvest Christian Fellowship Arizona. Uh, on there, you should find under the video section, uh, Bible studies uh, that indicate, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, the different gospels and stuff like that. For Let me show you, give me exam, um, a moment here. Um, so anyway, I thought I, we kind of go uh, do this together here a little bit. So um, you want to open up, of course, YouTube here. Uh, you want to put in, um, let's see here. I want to put in um, Harvest Christian Fellowship Arizona. Okay. Uh, that pops that up here. You find this here. You see a picture of Harvest Christian Fellowship. There's 266 videos probably on the right on the right track here okay click that there and then under videos Everybody okay you have different sermons here on this under the videos kind of take a look here you go down see here you go here's bible studies so the bible study 1 through 6 4 7 through 13 14 through 21 um two weeks ago we post this made it public and took care of the things that need to be done click that here like this and then of course the Bible study allows you to go through the study there's videos you'll watch the video and then um, and then right after the video there's a way oh. right as soon as you get done with the video so this is section chapter 1 through 14 and what I have my kids do or they did is they had they answered the questions so right there, you stop right there, and then you could pause the movie, okay? You can pause it, and, you know, it'll ask you, like, okay, what is the Word? Who made all things? What did the Word become? Who is the Word made flesh? Okay, then right after that, even after those questions, uh, there are, there you go. All right, boom. Have you ever done something and did not get credit for it? So these are open-end questions. How did it make you feel? What do you think God, how do you think, what do you think God feels when others try to take credit for what he did and create, okay? And this is based on what you just read. So you just read, or you just watched chapter 1, verse 1 through 14, and it said that, you know, he came into the world, and even though the world, he created the world, the world did not recognize him, okay? So, so in that case here, um, it's uh, kind of saying, hey, have you ever felt maybe like, what do you think God felt like when he created everything and people did not recognize uh, him and his work? Okay, so um, practical questions. And then right after that, you know, of course, you go back, continue on section two, which is John chapter one, to verse 15 through 37. This is chapter by chapter and verse by verse on this. Okay, so. Uh, so that's a very good Bible study. Uh, of course, there's other resources at Harvest Christian Fellowship, you know, in our videos. Um, Everybody out of the pool. See here, you can go into your videos, and then you can do all the uploads, all the things that we did, including our service, our live service streams that we had for our services. So April 5th, uh, 29th, 22nd, all the live streams that we have. For you and different types of programs uh different types of things uh for you guys to see okay so um don't just expend these these are great resources for you i'm not saying because i'm the one who do who does them uh who did them but because uh um, they are great for you to study and to grow as a family okay very important um all right so uh just want to let you know um even in our family uh, we've seen a very strong uh, unity because the kids have gone through the studies and have learned, you know, have been taught the scriptures. You know, as they're going through it and they got something in common because they know. And what's a great thing as a parent is, is I, if they get into issue, I'll stop them and I go, okay, guys, remember in John chapter 7, what did Jesus say? 
You know, didn't Jesus say, you know, that, um, that you know, he who wants to be the greatest needs to be the servant of all? Yeah. Okay, then what do you think that means? It means, you know, I can't be b being bossy. Okay, great. So, so they're le they learn things and they know the scriptures, okay? So it's really great to reference and teach them and remind them what the scripture says. So, anyway, uh, today's uh, teaching is in Second Chronicles. Oh, one other announcement, sorry, one other announcement. Um, we are working in drive-in church this coming up Easter, Resurrection Sunday. We are doing a part one of the Resurrection Sunday. The next part will be after uh, everyone comes back to church and everything's back to normal. We will do a part two of the Resurrection Service. But this one, we're going to do drive-in church. What does that mean? Okay, drive-in church. Let me show you, show you a uh, little video here of a quick uh, drive-in church. Um, again... YouTube. Oh, you know what? Let's just put in here uh, drive in church. Here. Drive in church. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can get me some images of this. Okay. There you go. So, this is what your drive in uh, church would look like. Okay. Um, people come in to a car with a car and you park your car just like this in our drive in church. Okay. And we broadcast it using an FM rate, uh, transmitter. And the FM transmitter goes to all your cars. So you just tune into a station. And then once the station, you tune into the station, you'll be able to hear the message. Okay? Obviously, uh, so you come in your car. If you don't have a vehicle, there will be a place for you to, to sit. We will have a radio out with the station on there. But this gives you an opportunity. You can sit outside, too, you know, on top of your tailgate. You can, you know, put chairs outside, whatever you'd like to do. Um, and this is going to be just temporary, folks, okay? Now, here's a big drive-in church. See that one? Look at that big one, okay? This is for a very, very large uh, church uh, who's having a drive-in church, okay? So we're going to have a drive-in church um, this coming up uh, Sunday. So... Um, <clears throat> pray for us as we get that together. We're hoping that all the kinks are being done. We are, we have been working on it since Sunday, uh, trying to get it all together. So, uh, we are looking forward to that. Okay. All right. Well, in second Chronicles chapter 34, what I read today is, um, uh, Josiah's king and Josiah became a, a young king. He, he became king when he was only eight years old. Okay. And he began to reign, and the very first thing Josiah did is the Bible says he was a good king. He, he did what is right in the sight of God, cleared the temple, cleansed it, did what is right, okay? Then what happened was, um, as they were repairing the temple, it says, and when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Helka, the priest, found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. So they found the book of the law, okay, the law of Moses. And Helka answered and said to state, uh, Sephan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Helka, Helkiah delivered the book to Saphan. Saphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servants they do. And when they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord and had delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen, and then Saphan, the king, the scribe told the king that Helkiah, Helkiah, the priest, had given the book, given me a book, and Saphan read it before the king. Now, <clears throat> he's reading the book. I want you to understand, they lost, they did not have the book of the law for a long time. It was lost. They didn't have it. They didn't know. They were relying on prophets and people like that. And it says, it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he ripped his clothes. And the king commanded Helkiah. Hakam, the son of Saphan, and Abdon, the son of Mecca, and Saphan, the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all this that is written in, the, in this book. Okay? So what was the response? <clears throat> what was the response of King Josiah when he found out that he wasn't doing right, he ripped his clothes. It's a way of of mourning and, and repentance. And he humbled himself. 
You know, when we are when we're encountered with truth, we we can react in one of one of two ways. We can repent, humble ourselves, and say, "You're right." You know, I'm, I humble myself. I'm 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 wrong. I need to serve God. Or we can resist and be prideful and refuse um, to to uh, submit to God and to humble ourselves to God. And and when we do that, we find ourselves in, in the wrong place because we know what the truth is, but we reject the truth. And if we reject the truth, it doesn't make the truth non-truth. So if we reject the truth, it doesn't make the truth non-truth. It makes us false. The truth is always the truth. Whether we, re whether we accept it or we don't accept it, the truth is always the truth. So we, there's two ways. King Josiah did what is right. Now, they go to this prophetess, and this prophetess tells them, Hey, you, there's wrath and judgment upon this because you guys refuse to serve the Lord. Um, so, uh, but... She gives them a, a glimpse of good news, okay? And the good news is that that even though there's going to be judgment, um, uh, that Josiah would not. Um, he says, this is the judgment to him. She says, because thy heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God, and when you heard the words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, you humbled yourself before me and you rent your clothes, you ripped your clothes and wept before me. I have heard you says the Lord. Behold, I will gather to you thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall your eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king sent word to Jerusalem, Judah, and he, and he again continues cleansing, and, he's, and he says, let's read this to the great and small. He read it in their ears, all the words of the book of the covenant. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, he, this is a great thing. You're you shall not see, neither shall thy eyes see all the evil, okay, all the calamity, all the evil I will bring upon this place. Why? Because, why? Because you, what? Humbled yourself. Your heart was tender, okay, soft. You humbled thyself, all right? Means submit. You bended your knee. You bent your knee uh, before God. When you heard his words against this inhabitants, you humbled, you wept, okay, you moaned. He knew they were wrong, and he and he and he moaned. And because he did this, God spared him. Really, key a key to God's uh, blessing and and protection and hedge of protection over us is for us when we humble ourselves and we weep and we we say, God, you're right, I'm wrong. I need to serve you, Lord. So let me pray with you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I just pray, Lord, as we humble ourselves to you, Lord God, that you will protect our families and our friends. Father God, that you put your hedge of protection around us, bring prosperity and blessing into our lives, Lord God, that even though there's this evil and calamity throughout the world, Lord, we are protected by you, God, that we are humbled because we've humbled ourselves. Help us to humble ourselves to you, God, always recognizing you as the Lord God. No one greater and mightier than you. You are Yahweh Elohim, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your peace. We pray for Harvest Christian Fellowship. We pray for the your church, your body, Father God, that you touch it and use it. Father, we pray for the families and friends, Lord, and acquaintances, and those, Father God, that we come across and around, Lord. Help us, Father, as we seek your face. We love you and we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Christ be with you again, Pastor Mike Salmon from Harvest Christian Fellowship. I'll see you soon.